okay, so the Buddhists would love this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If like oh, yeah, yeah. Christianity got all of its coolness from us. Like that would be like the ultimate well, flex. Well, here's the deal. Look, if this look version it. of Jesus we're looking at right now <laughs> got that way because the Buddhists taught him what was up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Midnight Mormons. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, with Brad Whitbeck and Kwaku L. And uh, recently, we actually stumbled upon a discussion about Jesus Christ, his lost years between his childhood and his adult ministry, and, I mean, his adult ministry, and whether or not he made it to India in between those years. This is Kwaku's supposition Kwaku, what say you to back up this claim? So, okay, there's a couple different, like, schools of thought on it. Uh, the first one, the probably the most famous one, is the Nicholas Nodovich story. Okay. He's cool. a Russian guy who makes the claim that he went to Tibet and met with some monks who showed him a record of Jesus, Isa, in India. And when he went back to Europe to tell everyone about it, when they tried to investigate, the monks were like, yeah, no, never happened. We've never even met this guy. And they're like, this man's a fraudster and a liar. Well, then another guy goes and the monks show him and they say, yeah, no, here, here's the record. And that guy's like, wait, no, I saw the record too. So like three other people saw the record. But whenever they tried to make it a mass public story, the monks would deny it, I think, because they didn't want any attention or mm. maybe just three hoaxers who were lying. Right. Yeah. But then there's another one where... It's this idea that Jesus actually um, uh, didn't go to India during those lost years, but survived the crucifixion and went to India instead. Do you find that one even remotely credible? I could swallow the idea that we don't know where he was between the age of 13 and 30 and there's 17 yeah, years Yeah, when there. they break your ankles, have a spear through you, give you a crown of thorns and nail you to a cross, surviving that <laughs> before like Advil... And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like serious medical surgery. Is, well, also, maybe yeah. his divinity also was better than Advil. Yeah, but with it, but <laughs> you remove but, the resurrection, he, he's not really divine anymore. Exactly. You know, like so, the, yeah. the fact that he died and overcame death is such a core tenet of our religion. Like yeah. I could maybe see someone being like, yeah, after he was resurrected, he went down to India. I but mean, like, there is the option that he was just like an like a divine mutant. Jewish magician type guy who like there's some people take that like no I don't believe he was resurrected but I do think he performed miracles like there are some of those people hmm. so I'm not sure whatever the person who had you know came up with this thinks um, but there's also one story of Jesus um, going and spending the rest of his life in like a small town in Japan what really? you heard this one no yeah and there's okay. still to this day like a small village where they believe that Jesus like went there and they believe that they're his descendants. Interesting. Str- yeah. So there's Dude. a bunch of these little strange pockets all throughout um, Asia where they just have, they have like these Je- Jesus traditions. Um, so, okay, wait. So we're saying not only did this Novavich guy say that at the Hemis monastery, and, and they claimed, like, I will back up your claim. I w- looked up on Quora and found all kinds of people that have visited this monastery and talked to Buddhist abbots there at the monastery. Yeah. And they have said, did you know Jesus Christ studied here? We call him Isa. And that's their traditional co- claim. Similar to traditional claims about, like, oh, this is the sepulcher of Peter. This is the shroud of Cur- Turin or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to disparage or verify any of these claims. Well, this um, is just enough. To- here, here's the thing. Enough people have gone now to these monasteries and seen the records they have. Yeah. Where okay. it, it like so this was a thing. Elizabeth Clare Prophet, like back in I think the eighties or nineties, she was the okay. leader of the Church Universal and Triumphant. They're like the monasteries. Which is an awesome name. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, it Look, causes two things though. Can I just jump on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever yeah. you meet a child army in Africa, they always have like the People's Liberation Army of Freedom and Love as like their name. You know, it's always some epic oh, yeah. awesome name that completely betrays <laughs> like the bloodthirsty nature of whatever tyrant and warlord is running them oh, you know what i'm saying so whenever i hear the name of like the church universal triumphant and what is it it's just, it's the church universal and triumphant okay so if whenever i hear the church universal and triumphant i think it's either some really sick evangelicals with some based christian rock 
worship services or it is straight up like worse than Waco. We're building a compound. So <laughs> like, you know. Okay, so I know you're not supposed to have like your favorite cult leaders. But if oh I my god. My favorite cult leader, it would be Elizabeth Claire Prophet. Uh-huh. This is one of the most b- women in uh- all of religion. Okay, <laughs> so she she's like a new age uh uh like uh she believes in the ascended masters. Like okay. El Moroya and all those people and, and the Count of St. Germain. And she believes oh. in like, you know, that stuff. And she uh-huh. believes that like she believes that Jesus was a, a, a before he was Jesus. He was a military leader in Atlantis. Just like, whoa. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> what? It's like, I have no idea where you're getting that from. But tell me more. So yeah, cool. that sounds you know awesome. Saying? Like, so they've got. OK, these, by the way, but, Kwaku, I'm glad to find out that even you have a threshold of like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> yeah, look, I believe in some stuff. Well. I say stuff on Midnight Mormons that the audience doesn't know what what I really believe in when I'm just trolling. But uh, the point is, I like to blur the lines. But anyway, so uh, so she has this religion. It starts in L.A. Okay. Or her husband, Mark L. All Prophet. All the best things do. Midnight yeah. Mormons. Her husband, Mark uh, L. Prophet, leads this new age religion where they do the the violet flame and the shimbamba and the shumbamba. And all these people start joining. But then they leave to Montana. And they buy, like, thousands of acres in Montana and literally have a giant compound. Um, oh and, boy! Oh wait, pa- can you pause real quick? Yeah, this is James. Hope, see, hopefully, we have a right. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, cool. Hello. Oh, I, can I guess where you're at? You can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, we are in Cardin's studio. <laughs> Well, we will find another person. We'll figure it out. Thanks, dude. Okay, we'll see ya. I'll, I'll give you money for a, a, an Uber, dude. Uh, an Uber from Ogden to Provo is uh, That'll be a lot. 60 bucks, right? No. I think more than that. It'll be like 80. It's not worth it. Um, okay, fine. Well, I don't mind paying for it because the. Uh, I'm uh, sure if you guys come down here, I don't want it to be a drain if I can help pay something. Um, well, let's just finish this and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right, let's wait, go. Wait, okay. Oh wait, no. I gotta zoom in. Elizabeth Claire Prophet. She was really cool. Rest in peace. Sounds like. May it. she rest in peace. Elizabeth Claire Prophet. Okay. Cool. So. Pause until. 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Dude, that guy's got to get over it, dude. Like, seriously. I think at this point, it's kind of a meme. Okay. <laughs> um, he was really bothered by your Blair White comment. He just is like a horrified. <laughs> like, take a joke, dude. Like, chill out. Okay, cool. So keep going. What'd you say? Yeah, so, okay. So after this, they move to Montana by thousands of acres and build a compound. And they buy a bunch of weapons because they think there's going to be like a Cold War. What? Yeah. <laughs> And so the U.S. government takes away their 501c3 status, oh. and then they buy more weapons. Uh, <laughs> and the U.S. government gets a, gets scared because this woman is like, "I have lived 18 lives, and I was once Joan of Arc, and I have an army of people and the Wait, Count of Saint." I, I gotta give. And they're like, "Whoa!" And then they give <laughs> the government gives them back their 501c3 status if they promise not to buy any more weapons. So this woman scared the entire federal government. <laughs> oh man! Wait, oh my gosh! Okay, so I just Googled she is this. the most bad a woman in modern religious history. I think she is so freaking cool. Well, dude. Okay, so look wait, at click this. on this picture of her in front of the American flag. You see it? Oh, I know. I'm so I'm just so the audience can see. This is Elizabeth Claire Prophet, and wait, I click on, <laughs> click on that picture. Okay, it shows how cool she is. This one right here. Uh, it's her in front of the American flag. Okay, this is Elizabeth Claire Prophet. In front of the American flag, and um, we make make it make it bigger. I know that's what I'm trying to do right here, know. right now. So this is Elizabeth Claire Prophet. Come on, Quaku's hero. You, you can't tell me she does not look bad. Dude, a <laughs> she looks a lot like Mallory. 
Mallory okay, Everton. Okay, well, look, oh. here's, here's my point. Here's my point. <laughs> she looks like... you, you Like you 50 years from now. You want to mess with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, yeah, she does look it, like... It would be a shame if you and your family disappeared. That's yep. what she has that look. <laughs> so, anyway, I just have to say... There's only two organizations I know of that have bullied their way out of and back into a 501c3 status. Don't forget, the Church of Scientology originally had its 501c3 status. And then the Church of Scientology had its 501c3 status taken away. What? And they finally sent so many private investigators after high-ranking members of the IRS Proving that they were using uh, funds improperly to buy champagne in hotel rooms, uh, showing the, the the opulence of the IRS meetings. And like they literally bullied the IRS so badly that finally you can watch this in some of the documentaries. Finally, the head IRS dude sat down and said, like, OK, how do we make this end? And right. they said, give us our 501c3 status back. And so, <laughs> so the cool. Church of Scientology, like it takes crazy psycho almost awesome religion <laughs> you know to like pull that kind of look here's what i'm saying kind of thing I, off dude he, i'm gonna I, <laughs> you know? I don't care if i'm the only guy in the world to say this okay i will defend the church of scientology somewhat no i'm well, on board as, with you on that as as humans that are participating in the human experience yes no 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 but Wait, let, me, abuses. Let, me, let me let me finish all right okay here's, i think they're also kind of badass here's why oh gosh no hear me okay like, you've I know. literally played into every trope that i'm trying to debunk when john yeah. delane goes on oh uh, cool likes the scientology <laughs> first of all here's why they're kind of cool okay this is something nobody wants to admit <laughs> you and you alone are fun responsible of them for the for xenu this. stuff the Xenu stuff is cool, all right? <laughs> the Xenu stuff is really cool. And, and okay. <laughs> outside of just that sort of stuff, like, dude, Scientologist saved my uncle. Really? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh. He was like a big... Dude, guys, I lived in Children's Hospital of Los Angeles a block away from there. They're not allowed to proselyte within two blocks of that freaking place because so many of them have, like, freaking restraining orders and stuff, dude. Like, what? Yeah, so I, I mean, this was just up in Canada, right? Okay. So like my uh, well, there's some people that have been helped. Like Will Smith says that he got over his stage fright because of the Scientology class that he took on, you know, yeah. like confidence and, and stuff. And I believe that anybody who has a sincerely like deeply held belief, like every single uh -huh. one of those people, is doing it because of some form of truth that they found in it, right? Yeah. And so I think that there is truth in Scientology, even though some people might think you're a psycho for saying that like there is truth in it well, and i think it well, there's helps always going to be some i mean there's some measure of truth in the biggest lies that satan tells exactly you know yeah I, there's I mean, there's so, truth in everywhere i also just want to like make clear the xenu stuff is cool yep they're one of the few churches that actually has the cojones to go up against big pharma because almost no church wants to touch it and these guys are like yeah no they're corrupt and they were like the first big religion to call out predatory psychologists and they're mm. like nobody else is doing it and they're like yeah a lot of these psychologists are actually grifters and con artists that want to keep you sad so they can make a buck remember that tom cruise interview with uh with the the matt lauer dude where he's like okay. do you know anything about the history of psychology because i do and it was like really like oh dang tom cruise but like <laughs> oh wow and then they haven't dude they're, they're sea org where they have like their scientologist army and all these ships where they walk around with their uniform, they're they have they are cool. They have swag and drip, <laughs> and and everyone's like, but they're a cult. And they, okay, maybe they are. I I I don't know. I'm not gonna mess with them. But all I'm saying is, dude, <laughs> they have an army. The Xenu story is kind of cool. They're gearing up to fight aliens. You ever seen a fat Scientologist? I haven't. They're all in shape. <laughs> they're all good looking. They have ships and an army, and they're gearing up to fight an alien warlord. How much more by their fruits ye shall you. know them. They are cool, and I don't care about what people say. Second, never this mind. Cool never too. mind the barbed wire fence around the camp. <laughs> Look, if you love someone, you gotta hit them. So no, oh my, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh my but, gosh! But <laughs> it's a joke, okay? But also, though, this connecting back to Liz Claire Prophet. She wrote a whole book about Jesus in India. Really? Yeah. Really? And so if you type, I, th I think it's just called Jesus in India um, by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. And she basically goes through and, and references every single person that makes a claim that they've seen these records in India. Really? Of Isa. 
and she like basically she she kind of just gives her opinion and 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 shows that she it doesn't it seems like the it's a whole if a whole conspiracy that these people are lying seems weird. It's she she's very much believes that Jesus went to India. So the question is, wait wait. So I just want to make sure that I get this straight. That on the um the coolness of the Zenu story and the ba ness of Elizabeth Clare Prophet, you're prepared to commit to the idea that Jesus spent his mystery years in India. I'm not <laughs> saying that. All I'm saying is it, this stuff is worth looking into because in the 80s and 90s, because of Jim Jones, the you know Kool Aid guy, yeah. and a lot of those weird cults that popped up, every okay. other Christiany, New Age, new religious movement got deemed evil and insane. Just it's like what Charles Manson people. did to the hippies, right? Yeah, right. Like, it's really sad. Like there was some really like I was raised by hippies, and you know the free love stuff went too far. But let me tell you, the music. What they did to music, what they did to a lot of art, um, they really kind of in, in, invented the idea of like chill and and counterculture to this day, I think, is an they validated counterculture in a way that Mormons now kind of occupy that rest. We are now the new counterculture because culture has gone so secular and bogus. But the idea that counterculture could exist as a viable form of living really is thankful, uh, you know, thanks to the hippies. But then once the Charles Manson murders happened, like it just it ruined the hippie movement because hippies became synonymous with psychos that live in compounds and it could come down and murder you in the middle of your night if you're even relatively normal. Right. So you're yeah. saying that Jim Jones did that. It stigmatized all of the new age movements. Yeah, yeah. I, I okay. think that they, there was a lot of them and they all got a bad rep because of the weirdos. And and, and, and now, though, with the Internet, uh, you f you're finding all these YouTube channels and podcasts with these people that are like popping up again and like, oh, do you, anyone remember this church? No, but they had some really cool, weird stuff. Let's dive in. And you're listening. You're like, your ideas are kind of strange, but there are also some of the, yeah, sorry, lost years of Jesus. Some of your ideas are like kind of beautiful. They have some beautiful teachings. So anyway, I, this is like a whole period of like, there's like a three decade period of all of these new religious movements with all this cool info and stuff that nobody paid attention to. And I've just been reading about it. And it's like, huh, kind of crazy, kind of crazy, but also. Sometimes crazy is just crazy until crazy is true. Remember this? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Stone 16. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I don't know if Jesus went to India, but all the people that believe Mary Magdalene carried Christ's son to Scotland, right? You've got all a bunch of those people in Europe that believe that. Uh, uh, the people that believe that the, uh, um, the, the Virgin Mary went to Britain. Um, and so you have like the, the, you have the Brits who were like part of the, 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 like the descendants of, I mean, you have all this, these te these beliefs and teachings and ideas are they all fake? Like, like, do you really expect me to believe a book that has so much divinity and magic and supernatural uh, accounts just stopped and then everything is just like, like the entire Bible is like, here's the lineage of this and this and this and they went to this land and 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 this land and, this land and, this land and, and now, no, no, no more. Yeah, they never traveled. And by the way, they stayed put in a monarchical time when like there were actually princes squashing rebellions and kings just committing genocide because they've heard prophecies from some of these minority groups that kind of need to be put underneath our thumb. Yeah. So I, I, I'll tell you this much right now. Part of the reason why, why I'm kind of willing to entertain some of these ideas, right, is because we don't know about those lost years. Yeah. They're not found in any scripture whatsoever. And There's some apocryphal stuff about like the childhood of Jesus. Yeah. Like, okay, it, like, but how is that stuff? any different than Elizabeth Clare Prophet in 1980 writing a book on what she thinks and some guy in 480 writing a book on what he thinks, right? So so this is the only reason why I'm kind of willing exactly. to entertain this though. <laughs> is, like, exactly. <laughs> so um, the reason why I'm kind of entertained, I could entertain the idea that, hey, maybe they went as far as India was because that Silk Road that took uh, yeah. Timothy to India India could have just as easily taken Jesus Christ less than 60 years earlier. All right. Mm -hmm. And also what people forget is I mentioned this in one of their previous podcasts. So forgive me if you've heard this before, but we really underappreciate the term Magi and the three Magi. Mm -hmm. The word Magi in Koine Greek is specifically meant for Magus, 
which literally means magicians. The three wise men is the translation of the King James Bible, but in the Koine Greek, they're called the three magi. And they only use that word one other time in that New Testament. You want to know what it is, Kwaku? You remember? Uh, Brad? Simon, Simon Magus. Magus. Yeah, it's yeah. when, when guy, Peter yeah. literally fights Simon Magus, and then it's used as a pejorative for somebody who's using a false priesthood that's not God's priesthood, just like the canes and the snakes of Pharaoh and mm, Moses right, right, having right. his showdown with the bad magic. So good magic versus bad magic, right? Mm. So the three magi were not called the three wise men. They weren't uh, in the coin Greek. They weren't called the three prophets. They weren't called the three disciples. They weren't called the three men of God. They were called specifically in all of the references we have in coin Greek, not some mistranslated scroll sitting in a monastery somewhere in every single reference to the three magi. They use the term magus, which was that lower form of magic that was generally considered vulgar folk magic. Right. Well, so if we're and, literally and astrology, honestly, a little bit of yeah, it. and astrology. So if we're mm -hmm. venerating what most people think could have been three Zoroastrians who were the first to recognize the divinity of Jesus. Also, it's, you uh, know, well, like, do you know why <laughs> it's, it, it's important that they call them the wise men? Because who else practice a lower form of magic? King Solomon. Solomon, the wise, Solomon the wise. Yep. So, so uh, wait, the, his wasn't priesthood. It was a lower form of magic. It's probably priesthood. Ma all magic that's for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is considered priesthood. The, the only time magic is actually condemned in the Bible is if it's for a different God. Yeah. Which is interesting because it kind of winks that it could work. You know what I'm saying? Uh. So um, so Solomon the Wise, this it's, it's a wisdom of this secret knowledge. Sounds like Paul. Right. So so anyway, yep. it, it all kind of goes together. But I, I don't know if Jesus went to India. So, but is it that crazy? I, here's the deal. I I don't think it's that crazy that he could have been. Americas. Yeah, exactly. And that's where I'm going with this is we have a record of Jesus Christ in the Americas. That is the Book of Mormon. And in the Book of Mormon, it talks about how there are many different records that he has of many different visitations with other people in other lands. And I am not bothered by that at all. If some of that was during his life before his ministry in Jerusalem, or if, I mean, it sounds like the last years of Jesus stuff tends to be saying things like he went there and was learning there, right? Before his ministry in Jerusalem. This would be super interesting though, because like, for example, in Islam, they call, you know, Jewish people and Christian people, the people of the book, because there's a lot of intersectionality, dare I say, <laughs> in between, um, especially in the apocryphal works. Uh, of Jesus Christ. In fact, what's really interesting is um, I had a stake president when I was in New York that taught the most beautiful and spiritual and uplifting and amazing um, religions of the world class as just a institute class that he volunteered to teach. And he had traveled the world. I believe he was like an executive for like American Express, one of the big Wall Street companies, you know, but he'd had a chance to sit at prayer with every major relig religious head in all of his travels because he had a chance to meet them as a dignitary. And um, he said something uh, really interesting. He's the one that got me into Bart D. Ehrman and stuff like that. So yeah. there's a lot of intersectionality especially in the apocryphal uh, writings of um, of like, you know, the Catholic Church and in Islam and Judaism, so on, so on and so forth. So anyway, when I was in New York, I had this amazing religions of the world class and uh, taught by you know state president who had a chance to uh, sit at prayer with um, every single major religious head. Right. And he had related to us a beautiful story. Okay, he's the one that told me to read The Shepherd of Hermas, and he literally thinks that that's straight up got some inspired writ in it, okay? Um, Joseph Smith was uh, a, a lot more down with the Apocrypha than against it as well. But there's also a beautiful, um, apocryphal, but even some Islamic scholars think that this actually belongs in their canon, all right, story of Jesus Christ taking clay and making a bird fly. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pigeons. Yeah, and, that's and, some and, of the early apocryphal stuff. And he also stuff. blinds a kid. He blinds a kid? And smites a kid down. Young, young Jesus. What? Yeah, and the yeah. Islamic accounts of young Jesus, he's like... Kind of, oh, kind yeah, of, so anyway, we're people of the book because they have like their version, you know what I'm saying, in their books. And to them, Jesus was just a prophet. He wasn't actually the Messiah, so on and so forth. But um, 
Yeah, I, I'm kind of like, I don't think we're getting the full story. Is basically what I'm many, saying. Oh, one hundred percent. Did which? I suppose if the books are written, would not be enough books to contain yeah, the things. Yeah, the Bible literally tells us that we don't have everything written. Bull crap! Christ. Bible got everything we need, and if at any point you think it, Jesus, he went from thirteen and then he blinked and he was thirty. Ain't nothing happening between there. Like this is literally the okay. So if have. not, India, this last question. A lot of people are going to say like. Okay, so the Buddhists would love this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If like oh, yeah, yeah. Christianity got all of its coolness from us. Like that would be like the ultimate well, flex. Well, here's the deal. Look, if this look version it. of Jesus we're looking at right now <laughs> got that way because the Buddhists taught him what was up. But here's you the know? deal, dude. <laughs> like every single world religion is just the like apostate teachings that lasted through one of the last dispensations, right? So, like, every single world religion got the truth from God originally. What were those wild eyes for, man? You're no, like, that was a harsh sentence. Oh, just because I said apostate. I, I, meh. I, well, I, I, I'm not saying. He didn't mean that in the derogatory I term. Dude, I freaking yeah. made fun of people all the time. It's fine. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, like, that's that's one of our core teachings is that every yeah. single one of these world religions, they've had a falling away from truth at some point. And these are the leftovers, right? Yeah. Of all of those truths. So, like, of course... If, if Jesus went to India, he was going to find truth in Buddhism. Anyone can find truth in Buddhism or in okay, Hinduism but or also, in any man, That, the only reason why I also, I don't want to say cast out a little bit on this, but it's like, that would have had to have been a family trip. Although, I don't know. Jesus went by himself to the temple in Jerusalem and was there for three days arguing with scholars before mommy Mary and daddy Joseph realized what was going on and went back to Jerusalem to find him. So who knows? He might've just gotten his little stick with his little bandana knapsack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And taking that trip to India for a couple of years. I mean, could have been his mission, his 19 year old mission, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'm not bothered by the idea of Christ going to India. Like he had a mission for all of the world. I, I know that his mortal ministry was for the people of uh, the house of Israel and that that's one of the core things that we have here. But we also have a lot of scattered lost tribes all over the place. And okay. so I, I think, of course, he would go and visit those people. Look, all I'm saying is I think as much as the this, this new age stuff gets a, a bad rep because of the tarot cards and the crystals and the angel readings and all that, you know, and the it's, chick standing in front of American flags that look like judges that bullied cool. the uh, she, the bully the U.S. government. Who would win a fight between her and Hillary yeah. Clinton? She I think would. she would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got, uh -huh. she knows something. She knows something we don't know. <laughs> but I feel like there's also truth, and um, and we often you just we we decry other traditions because of our culture. Yeah, and we don't want to recognize the other things people have that are true. But the reality is. There is obviously some connection between the creator of the world and these other religions that have been around for thousands of years, like Hinduism, mm -hmm. and sometimes worth looking into, but nobody wants to. They just want to do intersectionality between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Mm -hmm. But what about Hinduism and Buddhism? And, and you can't read you can't read Taoism and not see absolute inspiration in the Tao Te Ching and what Lao Tzu said. Mm -hmm. Like literally, the Sermon on the Mount and Lao Tzu saying, "Do not try and control." that creates resistance is 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 right there with Jesus Christ saying fear not for tomorrow today has enough stress you know uh, live by the sword die by the sword mm -hmm. yeah is karmic yeah that, it is that straight up yin and yang right there like that so like, anyway oh. here we're going to put it to a vote who here thinks Jesus Christ in his lost years made it to india i mean i don't know but i Okay, I think it's it's plausible. I think he could have. It's yeah. plausible. You think he could have? Yeah, easy that he could have. He can't walk. I don't know. Places. I think it was. I don't. I he can walk on water. He can't walk to India. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. He I, went to freaking the Americas. I'm okay, totally okay, fine with okay, him going true, to India true. at some right, point. Tell us what you guys think in the comments below. This is Midnight Mormons. See you guys in the next podcast.